So recently for the 60th anniversary of the RNC International Animation Film Festival, Toei Animation created two short specials for One Piece and Dragon Ball Super. Of course, we'll be looking at the Dragon Ball one and breaking it down. And one of the big points of interest surrounding it was seeing Shintani's designs return, but also getting to see a lot of the main cast in his style, like Android 18, Krillin, Tien, Gohan, etc. And while I found this element certainly of interest, what personally left me with the most impact actually was the direction and background art. They are two areas that can feel sometimes overshadowed, especially the latter. And it's amongst one of the reasons why Dragon Ball Z Movie 13 still holds up as one of my favorite Dragon Ball films with Mitsuo Hashimoto's great use of color and impactful framing. And here it was likewise quite striking and a little nostalgic in some ways, with some shots actually reminding me of those warm afternoons from movie 13 with a lot of red and purple tones. Of course though, before we get to all that and more, like usual the featured artist for this one is Toby Skywalker. He does both sculpting and drawing and he's currently sitting under the 100 mark. So go show him some support on his art journey, I'm sure he would most appreciate it and the link to his account will be in the description. But now back to the video. So this little special was directed by Roita Nakamura, one of the series directors for Dragon Ball Super and it's supervised by the man himself, now Hiro Shintani. Now what's interesting is that a lot of the designs here are reused from Dragon Ball Super Broly, so I don't know if I would use this as an exact representation of what his approach for characters like Goku will be within the upcoming movie, assuming it isn't an entirely CGI film. And I have speculated in a prior video that looking at the trajectory of his art style over the years, it's most likely going to feature some variants to his older sheets, with perhaps there being a little more of an angular look with faces as an example. Then again, it may end up being hardly any different, but I'll touch on that later. To start it off though, there is some nice simple animation as the camera zooms through the clouds, but then there's a rather clean transition, with the lettering being vaporized as the Dragon Ball shoot past and Goku and Vegeta exchange some blows. Now what's cool here is how they are both represented with quite vibrant glowing line art with a sketchy look to the shading. It's quite attention grabbing, especially the fluorescent red. The animation here is also great. It begins with a smooth morphing sequence beginning from his eye, which can be quite complex to pull off, but it's executed really well. The timing starts off on twos and threes, then switches to mostly ones as these small shapes begin to merge together. In sequence, it looks stylish and smooth. The camera brushes past Goku with some smears and blue effects with Goku launching a punch at Vegeta before Vegeta returns with a kick. The punch and kick carries a good sense of weight, and what else I like here is Vegeta's gesture with the strong curvature to his arm, emphasizing force. The camera work and how it zooms in and out between blows and tracks the fist complements the motion and energy behind the movements. Thereafter, there's some cool effects with a great variety of different shapes, which transition into the next scene. And I have to say the switch between the bright yellow effects into the yellow sunset blends over nicely. Moving on, the camera tracks Piccolo with more of the cast appearing, speeding through the river. The background art and ambient lighting here instantly grabbed my attention when I first saw this and really drew me in as it is spectacular. The colors are rich and lively. The pinkish tone to the water is also beautiful. Furthermore, the low angle shot behind Piccolo complements his cool and stoic character. And speaking of compliments, I certainly have to give one in regards to whoever designed the vehicle Krillin is driving. It seems to be an original one and feels quite Toriyama-esque. Of course, there is a chance it might have been borrowed from an old Toriyama illustration. The inflatable raft does seem to be referenced from an old illustration, but I don't believe so for this one. Moving on though, we now come to Freezer. The storyboard here is again great. The overall composition with this circle of flames dancing around him, only showing his silhouette providing a mysterious feel, which is additionally aided by the initial blurring and all these destroyed buildings in the background, all come together in communicating a formidable feeling to Frieza, which of course is very fitting. And just like before, the use of color is bold and striking, especially with that distinctive contrast between cool and warm tones. I'll also add that there is a good sense of depth provided through the layering of various elements. On the animation side, the effects are animated nicely, and although small, it was cool how Freezer was animated moving a bit off to the side. The animator could have just used a still image, but it was a subtle detail that makes a character feel just that bit more alive. There is also a final close-up before moving on from Freezer. It's really well drawn, and the three-tone shading gives some extra depth. Then into the next scene, 
and what actually caught my attention here most was the surprising appearance of Tynes, who made like two appearances in the Dragon Ball Super anime I believe, so I'm sure this was a surprise to many fans as well. But in regards to the visuals, there's again a lot of depth through the storyboard, a very cheery atmosphere to the scene, and some nice animation like Vegeta and some more subtle work with characters like Krillin. Now something worth pointing out is that AJ on Twitter mentioned that the designs for characters who didn't appear in Dragon Ball Super Broly with exception to Gohan were following Yamamoto's older sheets but with a softer touch applied. And you can see it quite clearly with Krillin and Android 18. So Gohan seems to be the only brand new design here. Then to the final part to wrap this little special off with some family time. The main attraction here is the character acting which is so nice and animating four characters at once can be a bit more complicated to pull off but it's done really well. There are a lot of great energetic expressions here. Now in regards to Shintani's approach and change in style like I mentioned earlier, I did say that I personally wouldn't go off these designs as an exact 100% representation of how the character sheets would look for his future work since they are reused but even still you can notice some slight differences with more straighter lines for the jawline and head on both Gohan and Goku rather than the rounder ones and a similar look for the biceps in this shot. The lines for the clothing though are still very rounded and are really no different. And with Gohan's design, although easy to miss, there seems to be a return to having a break between the lines for the eyes, which originally changed right near the end of Z and can be especially seen in GT and beyond. It hasn't been 100% consistent though over the years, there were certainly deviations, but it was usually drawn connected. Now my guess to the reason it changed in the first place was just the staff following the way Akira Toriyama started drawing him right near the closing of the series, but also in the character sheets he did for Dragon Ball GT, so naturally they just continued on with this approach. But regardless, this seems to be the new look going forward for Gohan, which will make the people that felt he looked more like Vegeta at times quite happy. Funny enough though, I actually never really noticed it myself until this video, but that does mark the end of this special. Although short, it's spectacular. The characters in both design and animation feel bouncy and alive. The storyboard also flows really well with smooth transitions and impactful direction. For something that was about 23 seconds long, it's quite memorable. It makes me really look forward to future animation within this new era Dragon Ball is in. In particular, the move consistently to stick to more vibrant and warmer tones is certainly a welcome one. You can have some great animation, but if everything else is bland, it can zap some of the potential power away from something being even greater. And this additionally makes me even more eager now to see Shintani's new sheets, whether again, assuming it's a 2D film, but even if it isn't, we will get new sheets, no doubt, for the continuation of the Dragon Ball Super TV series. But anyway, thank you though all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for your continued support, and I'll see you later.